most wonderful texts of Sanatana Dharma, the Prasthanatraya, are the highest philosophies that have been received by the yogis in their dhyana. Most of it is not something that they saw with the physical eye or heard with the physical ears. Most of it is something that they received as a divine revelation. That is why it is called sputa. Sputa means that which reveals itself all of a sudden. So all these yogis could do was to prepare themselves to receive that ability to grasp, to understand, to experience what the divine had to reveal. Rishis are called mantra drishtas. It is said they have seen the mantra. For example, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. If you read the Ganapati Atarvashirsham, there the mention comes that Ganaka Rishi received this in his whichever state of highest communion and then he described how Ganapati looks like. And he describes Ganapati both at Nirakara Brahma and Saguna Sakara Brahman. Starts with Nirakara. Tam Brahma Asi. And then he goes to Saguna Sakara Brahman also of Ganapati. Ekadantam Chaturbhajam Pashamankushadharinam Radam Charvardam Hastair Vibranam Bhushakadvajam That comes in the second half, the description of the deity, Ganapati. But in the first half of the mantras which are received by that Rishi, he describes Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi, Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahma Vadishyami, Ritam Vadishyami, Satyam Vadishyami. I speak of you as the very Parabrahman and this is the truth, scriptural as well as my experiential truth. Ritam, that which has been stated in the scriptures and Satyam, that which has been experienced by me. In both ways, I confirm that you are that Parabrahman, though you are in the form, the Akar of a Ganapati with elephant head, four hands and all that. So these Rishis had a special ability to perceive things beyond the senses, call it extrasensory perception. And they had a way to communicate with the Divine, the Nirakara Brahman. And we all know there were four kinds of communications in the olden times, in their highest state of communion, para, it was called, beyond all the senses. Para itself means the higher or the beyond. So it was not uh, received by using any senses, intellect or any other sense faculty, not even by the act of meditation. It was just a spontaneous revelation to the rishis, mantra drishta or sputa. Then pashyanti, where they could see it as visions. We, they saw Ganapati as or whichever deity in a certain form, Ashtabhujas or Chaturbhujas or whatever form. And whatever they saw, they kind of spoke about it in richas, in poetry or even in prose. And this went on for a long time till it was revealed to other people through Guru Shishya Parampara and then it got scripted Veda Vyasa who compiled all such mantras into Vedas and things like that. And then came Madhyama. Madhyama means through the thought they could transfer this to another person, more like telepathy. So I'm thinking something, I want you also to think the same thing. So as you sit in front of the Guru, like Dakshina Murti, they say. He imparts knowledge through silence, not by speaking. He will sit under the tree and very strange, that is what Shankaracharya says. Guru is young, Shishyas are old. This is what is going on under a Vatavriksha, Tarovar Mule. So, and how does he teach? By silence. How can somebody learn by silence? It's not actually silence. Their minds get connected or merged with each other. Katopanishad says, no? Yachet vang manasi pragnya tad yachet jnana atmani. Jnana atmani mahatini yachet tad yachet shanta atmani. So it's the mind that gets connected with the Guru and then you are able to transfer the knowledge from Guru to Shishya. Even I talk about Bhagavad Gita being something like this. Veda Vyasa is somewhere, Ganapati is somewhere. Whatever Veda Vyasa is thinking, Ganapati is able to understand and then write. Last time we know Veda Vyasa put the condition, you have to write only after you understand whatever I have said. Gadapati is very sharp. So Veda Vyasa was thinking, if he keeps writing, I may run out of content. So I have to tell faster. Gadapati put the condition that I will, I will never stop writing. You should keep speaking. If you stop speaking, then this is the deal is over. So Veda Vyasa put the reverse condition that, okay, you write, but you should only understand and write. So that is how, but they were talking in their minds, you see. Some kind of a... I would say Madhyama kind of a communication. And then the final one, the lowest, and which is what we use, called Vaikari. Vaikari means I speak in the mic and you hear through the system. And then you or we speak to each other or write to each other. That is Vaikari Vani. The thing is that with a period of time, over a period of time, the quality of communication it deteriorated because our minds deteriorated. 
Para mind was not, not there, it was divine only. Pashyanti mind was there, it saw the things beyond the senses. Madhyama, it was mind only which was use, being used. And Vaikari, both body, mind, hands, legs, everything is being used, especially in classrooms. So, what happened in this Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga is what I am trying to come to. Everybody has an imagination of Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. In the middle of the battlefield, Kauravas and Pandavas are there, and there is this chariot of Krishna, Arjuna. And here is Arjuna complaining to Krishna or wanting to run away from the battlefield, giving all kinds of excuses. And here is Krishna trying to convince Arjuna about his duty, his dharma, as Kshatriya, and also how to do this dharma, so that he is not caught by the karma phala and gets into this cycle of birth and death, how to do it in the right way. That is what Bhagavad Gita is all about, doing your duty in the right way. And conversation is going on, Arjuna is engaged in the conversation, he is asking questions and answers, just like all Upanishads do. So Bhagavad Gita being an Upanishad, Upanishad, Upa means near, Ni means Nishchaya, and Shat means, there are three meanings to Shat, Shat Dhatu, one is Gati, Himsa and Avasadana, we all know about it. What is Gati? Gati is a movement or a progress or destiny. So Bhagavad Gita is progressing, we can clearly see from Arjuna Vishada Yoga, it has gone to Sankhya Yoga, to Karma Yoga, to Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga and it's going on. Finally it has come to Vibhuti Yoga where Krishna has revealed his presence in everything. Think of me in all as the best amongst the things, men and everything that you see. I am that. Think of divinity as that supreme perfection in everything that we do. So it has come this far. Arjuna is very pleased though. Upa has happened, why? Because they are in the same chariot from Upanishad point of view. Ni also is happening, why? Because Arjuna is understanding things and asking the right questions. When do you know that the student is sincere and is grasping the subject? When he asks the right question. So Arjuna is asking all the right questions so far. Krishna is happy as a teacher. Is shut happening? In the Gati, movement is happening. Is, that is, we have seen the movement is happening. Then, is Himsa happening? Himsa in the sense, destruction. Destruction of what? Destruction of Arjuna's fear, anxieties, attachments, doubts. Is it happening or not? That is the next question because only then Gita can be Upanishad. So, avasadhana or loosening of the bondage, is it happening? What bondage? Bondage of ignorance, bondage of attachments, whatever. So, this is what we have to study as the Gita progresses. But the Arjuna is able to appreciate it from the Upanishad point of view. So, shut Gati, Himsa, avasadhana. So last time Krishna has overwhelmed Arjuna with his glory, Vibhuti Yoga. And why did he do that? Because Arjuna himself asked, I have heard about you, you told me about this great secret that you alone are everything and everything is in you. Yet you are not in anything, nothing is in you. This is the secret you have told. I want to know how all I should worship you, Keshu Keshu Chabhaveshu, in which all ways can I think of you? Because in the temple I can think, you, think of you as the idol. But when I am working in my day, work a day life, how do I think of you then? When I am going for a walk, how do I think of you? When I am busy with some other activity, reading, teaching, eating, sleeping, how do I think of you? So Krishna gives him all kinds of examples. In everything you can see me. After this, Krishna revealing everything, he finally says that all this I am telling you, it is very, very small portion of my true glory. Not even the entire glory. I am telling you in short, in brief. And he goes on to say, I am sowing, doing so because it cannot be described, it is infinite. Therefore, I am telling you only in short form. And this also is only a spark, only a parcel, part, part and parcel, a small part of my glory. With that I sustain the entire universe. My entire glory you can never understand. Now what did Krishna do? He created curiosity in Arjuna. My small glory only is like that. Imagine what my big glory would be like. Now Arjuna's, you know, curiosity, kutuhala has been kindled. Now he wants to know, tell me about the real big glory that you have. You say you permeate everything, you pervade everything, everything is you, there is no place, no nothing that exists without you. How is that existence like? How do I experience it is what Arjuna's next question is. You describe to me how good that ice cream is or gulab jamun is or samosa is, but you are not allow me to taste it, that is unfair. So Arjuna now slowly is inching towards the idea that all this is nice to hear, but I want to experience something of it. Somebody told me, Swam, you talk about Brahma Jnana, Brahma Jnana. At least give me a little taste of it so that I develop interest in Brahma Jnana. Because I don't know how it feels like when you are a Brahma Jnani. I only know it as theory. You will be at peace, you will not fight with anybody, everybody will be at peace around you. Things like that. 
but I have never experienced such a state. At least give me a glimpse of that so that I will get excited, I will get interested, I will get, as I said, motivated to pursue that. That is how children ask when I tell them about it. I tell them, yes, you will get it. When you deserve it, you will get it. But you keep putting efforts nevertheless. Don't stop putting efforts. So here is Arjuna who has heard such glory of Krishna in Vibhuti Yoga. Now he wants to really experience some bit of that glory, at least a glimpse of it, a sneak peek into Krishna's tremendous glory. And next chapter comes in here, very aptly named by Vedavyasa as Vishwarupa Darshanam. Most of the people, when you see Vishwarupa Darshanam, what comes to your mind? That artist's uh, impression of a huge Krishna with a big mouth open and so many fires, fires are coming out. There are so many other heads, all kinds of devas, gandharvas, rishis, ganas, brahma, vishnu. Everybody is in that form and there are universes coming out, going in. There are people you know, whom he is swallowing and whom, all these things is what we know. This Vishwarupa Darshana is how it has been. Uh, painted by the artists. But is that the real Vishwarupa Darshana that this chapter is talking about is something we must ask. Saguna Bhaktas will be very happy with that artist's impression of Vishwarupa Darshana because they want to glorify their Krishna. My Krishna only is that great supreme Godhead and he is capable of all these things. Whereas truly if you define Vishwa, Rupa, Darshana. Vishwa means cosmos, the entire universe. Rupa, the form of it and Darshana, seeing it. So the real meaning is the yoga, the ability by which I can see the divinity in everything that surrounds me, inside, outside. Antar bahishta tat sarvam. How will I be able to see you, a divine? You know, even the most difficult situations of my life, I should see you, I should experience you, your presence. In everything, good, bad, and not so good, I should experience you. In people who are favorable to me and not so favorable and pleasant, I should experience you. In failures and successes, I must see your presence. In everything, how do I experience you? That is Vishwarupa Darshan. It's not about one fine day you suddenly get a power to see things beyond your perceptions, sensory perceptions. And you see a huge God appearing in the sky with all hands, heads and all that. That is not the Vishwarupa Darshana that we as people who understand the idea of Advaita should crave for. We should crave for that ability to see that oneness in this creation. To see God as the divine principle in everything that exists. That is the idea of Vishwarupa Darshana. Nevertheless, the chapter has its own merit, why it has been written like this, what is that Arjuna is experiencing, what is the significance of it. So we will dwell into it, but with this understanding that ultimate idea of Ishwarupa Darshana is to be able to feel that divinity in everything, everyone. However difficult, easy things might be. We must experience that hand of divinity. That is what Pratibodha Viditam Matam Amritattvam Hivindas. The one who experiences that divinity in everything in life Pratibodha, in every experience he sees only divine. Amrutattvam Hivindant. He experienced the immortality itself. Because such a person is never afraid. He sees divine in all. Even in death he will see divinity. So that is the idea. So we will enter this chapter of Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga. What does Arjuna say? Arjuna Uvacha Mad Anugrahaya Paramam Guhyam Adhyatma Sangitam Yatva Yoktam Vachastena Mohoyam Vigatomama he says, see, O oh Krishna, by hearing all these things that you have spoken to me just now, about what? Guhyam, Paramam Guhyam, ultimate secret about you, not ordinary secrets, ultimate secret about you, you have talked to me about it right now, Sangeetam, about that, about that state, you have spoken to me. Kyatva yoktam vachastena mohoyam vigato mama. Having heard you speak about this glory of yours, what has happened to me, what is my response to it? My moha, vigato, it has gone. My moha is gone. The moha delusion that I am going to kill these people and they are my kith and kin and you know how do I kill them. All these that he was suffering from. Remember in the first chapter, he says, I don't want to... I do, he, he didn't want to fight. I told him, I don't want to fight. Give, leave me alone. Let's go back. And Gandhi is falling. I am getting fever and all that. But Krishna says, nothing doing. This is not right. Then he finally says, please write, tell me what is right. Dharma Sammoda Cheta. I have become confused about my duty. I do not know what is right, what is wrong. So he says, Karpanya Dosha has overtaken me, cowardice. I can't think right from wrong. So please tell me, Shishya Steham, Shadivam, Tvam Prapannam. I am beseeching you, I am coming to you, I am surrendering to you as a Shishya, as a disciple. Only when he says that, then Krishna starts explaining to him the truths. So Arjuna has heard the truths of Bhagavad Gita so far and he is so overwhelmed. And what is his response to Krishna? Krishna, by listening to these wonderful things that you have spoken, the ultimate secret of your divinity, my moha is vigato, is gone. But what is gone can come back again. Vigata means agata also can happen. What happens to us in the classroom? Sir, I heard your lecture. All my doubts have disappeared. 
only till next morning. Next morning, all the doubts are back with their cousins. So while Arjuna is saying here, all my moha is gone, but he says, Vigato Mama, it's only gone. However, in the last chapter, he will say, Nashto Moha, Spritalabdha, my moha is destroyed. Destruction is the right method. That is why I'm asking whether Upanishad is being fulfilled here. Shut. Is that himsa, the destruction of moha has happened or not? Not yet. But avasadhana has happened. Little loosening of his delusion or the bondage, bondage has happened. Gati has happened. Some progress has happened on the spiritual path for Arjuna. But nashto moha is not happened. Vigato moha alone has happened so far. So Arjuna says it like this, that because of your grace, you taught to me all these things. My illusion seems to have gone now. But he also goes to say that eva me tadya thatha Vamatmanam Parameshwara Drishtum Ichami Te Rupam Aishwaram Purushottama. I've heard that you are the beginning, you are the end, all these things. Now, here and now, I want to experience something. What is that? He says, Drishtum Ichami Te Rupam Aishwaram Purushottama. The glorious form of yours that you talk about, that I am in everything, everything is in me. How does it look like? What does it feel like? What that experience should be like? I am very desirous of that vision, he asks Krishna. Then Krishna say, and also is so humble. See, Arjuna is humble. That is one qualification of Arjuna. Though he came, say, Nayo Rukhyo Ormadhyay, Ratham Stapayame Ochuda, he commanded Krishna, put my chariot in between us, because he thought he is the great warrior and Krishna is only a chariot here. But after listening to Krishna, he has humbled himself and now humbly he prays to Krishna, Manyase Yadi Tachakyam, Maya Drishtumiti Prabho. If you think I am deserving of such a grace, of having a vision like this, which I am asking for. Yogeshwara tato metvam darshayatmanam avyayam. Then, O Yogeshwara, you are the doer of magic. Yogeshwara, you are all powerful. Maya is in your control. If you think I am deserving of such amazing grace that I am asking for, would you not be so kind to give me that darshan of that indestructible form of yours, that amazing ultimate form of yours? Humbly is putting it to Krishna because he knows he doesn't deserve. He doesn't qualify with all his shortcomings, he doesn't qualify to be that. In fact, he doesn't qualify for anything. But why Krishna says, your only qualification is that you are very dear to me. You are my friend. You are my own. And now you are a shishya also. So Krishna tells earlier also, I do it because I love you. I have special uh, love for you. So I am doing, ex taking, ex making exceptions for you. So he is trying to start to stretch it a little more. Anyway, you have made enough exceptions because I am very dear to you. I know I don't deserve all these things. But will you please be kind enough to Give me a little more than what you have given and I want to see your ultimate form, how you really exist as the entire universe. Arjuna humbly prays to Krishna, if you think I deserve such a grace, please grant me this grace, grant me the vision and experience. How sweet. And what does Krishna say? Nothing doing enough is enough. Go back and fight war, the war now. No, he doesn't say like that. He says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Pascha me partha rupani shata shotra sahastra shaha nana vidhani divyani nana varna kritani cha. He says, okay, Arjuna, here, see what? He says, see my form, this form. How is the form? It is in multiple ways, in varied ways. How many varied ways? Hundreds of thousands of ways you see me now. Nana Vidhani, in different, different kinds of mind. Divyani, but all that is divine only because you're going to see some very horrific uh, visions also. But he says, all that is divine only. Get that right. Nana Varna Kritani, of various forms, shapes, various colors and tones. See, my, see me now. He tells Arjuna. Arjuna is looking around. Where do I see you? Then he says, wait, wait, you can't see it with your physical eyes. You have to have a special vision for this. And he tells Arjuna, Natumam shakyase drishtum anenaiva svachakshusha divyam dadami te chakshuha pashyame yoga maishwaram. You can't see me in this way with your physical eyes. Because it is not the physical eyes with, you, with which you see this these visions. There is a mental eye. Jnana Chakshu, Divya Chakshu. So Krishna realizes suddenly that, oh, I told Arjuna, see, look at me in this varied forms. Means because all the time Krishna is like that with his glory. We don't have the vision to see Krishna in his glory, so we think he's just the man standing there. But for him, he's all the time living in that glory. But then he realizes, oh, Arjuna is unable to see, even though I'm telling him see, but he's seeing nothing. So he says, okay, Dadami Divyam Chakshu. I'll give you a divine vision, Divya Chakshu. What is this divine vision? Four kinds of vision are there in divine vision. This has actually four kinds. You know, one is Jnana Drishti. You don't see things physically as it is. You see the inner significance of things. That is Jnana Drishti. In Divya Drishti, what all Drishtis you get? One, Jnana Drishti. You don't see things as it is. You see the deeper inner significance of it. Two, Atindriya Drishti. You have extra sensory perceptions. 
you can hear things which you generally can't hear with your ears or eyes. You see things which you can't see with your eyes. This is beyond senses, atindriya drishti you get. Then you get paralaukika drishti. You see things beyond this physical world. In this physical world also you can hear and see things which exist but not available to the faculty right now. Like we have wavelengths or we have frequencies of light. You know, We, do, we can't uh, see all of it. We are restricted. Other animals can see or hear frequencies. But even in this world you can see extra things. And of other worlds also you can perceive using this drishti. So sometimes we say that Devi came, that God came. They are not coming in from physical world, Bhuloka. They are coming from Bhuva Loka or Suva Loka or even Satya Loka, whichever Loka. We have 14 Lokas, no? Bhuva, Suva, Mahajana, Tapa, Satyam, Vyatala, Vitala, Sutala, Tatala, Mahatala, Talatala, Patala, like that. So we have 14 Lokas. So these are dimensions in which these energies exist. So this Paralaukika Drishti comes to you because of this thing and Trikala Drishti also comes to you. You can see the past and the future and the present. So four kinds of things happen when you get Divya Drishti and you will understand as the Shlokas progress. One, Jnana Drishti. You don't see things as they are. You see the deeper, deeper significance in it. Second, you see or hear or whatever things beyond your Indriyas also. Extra sensory perception you get. When you see things beyond this Loka, beyond the physical material world also, you can perceive things from other dimensions. And fourth is Trikala Drishti. You can see things of the past and the future. So that is the idea. So this is kind of Drishtis that you get when you get a Divya Chakshu. Quite interesting, but I, let me tell you only in the beginning. After that, it becomes overwhelming. In Katopanisha, the mention comes of those yogis who have that sukshma drishti. I just wanted to relate to it. It says, Esha sarveshu bhuteshu gudho atma na prakashate drishyate twagrayaya buddhya sukshmaya sukshma darshibihi. He says, those who have sukshma drishti, they alone see that atman also in all. That is the divine vision. So, Katopanisha, the Yama tells Nachiketa, only some people with great focus and concentration and one-pointed attention, buddhi, agraya buddhi, they are able to perceive things beyond this world. And they can even perceive the presence of Atma, which is otherwise very hidden, cannot be found. So this is that buddhi and this is that drishti that Krishna is being gracious, being nice to Arjuna to give it away like this. I am skipping, I am not doing all the shlokas, but what is that drishti like? Sanjaya is also watching this. See, Sanjaya is super lucky. He is sitting there with Dhritarashtra, but because Dhritarashtra asked for a boon, that I should know what is going on. So Sanjaya got this extra vision. So now he is also doing. He says, Aneka Vaktram Nayanam Anekam. Anekat Bhuta Darshanam. There are many mouths that Krishna has, many faces Krishna has, many eyes Krishna has. It's an amazing darshan of Krishna. Aneka Divya Bharanam, Divya Aneko Udya Tayudham. He says there is a lot of jewelry and you know, Abhushanam and Krishna, all divine jewelry. Also, there are many weapons that he is holding in many hands. And how all are lifted weapons. That is how Krishna is standing. Divya Malyam Bharam Dharam. All kinds of beautiful garlands and clothing. Krishna is wearing, very divine. Divya Gandhanu Lepanam, very fragrant Gandha, his body is smeared with, he is looking majestic. Sarvash Charyamayam, he says, very wonderful that whole thing is, everybody is mesmerized by that vision, those who are able to watch. Devam Anantam Vishwatomukam, he is the infinite God, divinity, Vishwatomukam, he sees in all directions. Compare this with Purusha Suktam, Sahastra Shirasha Purusha Sahastra Aksha Sahastra Pat. Sabhumim Vishwato Vritva Atyatishtad Dashangulam. The entire world cosmos is contained in him and he, he even extends or exceeds that by Dashangulam, ten fingers. Is the imagery of the Parusha Suktam. Thousands of heads, eyes, hands. So you may think, oh, this is what Arjuna is saying. Suddenly Krishna grows in size, become voluminous from earth to sky he covers and suddenly so many hands appear with so many weapons and so many faces, so many eyes. One way of looking at as, it as is Dvaita Bhava is this, but Advaita Bhava you see, Maybe Arjuna is seeing weapons, so many weapons in the battlefield. So many people standing with weapons up in their hands. He sees all of them as Krishna. Maybe all the people who are wearing all the ornaments, kiritas and all these, you know, uh, decorated and they have come to the war. He sees all of them as Krishna. Maybe all those eyes that are watching them in the middle of the battlefield, what's going on, he sees all the eyes as Krishna's eyes. Maybe all the faces that are around him, he suddenly sees all of them as Krishna. So think of Vishwarupa Darshan in a little different way than the traditionally how it has been spoken about. So this is how Arjuna or Sanjaya both are able to see that Krishna only is everything. Sarvam Krishna Mayam. So it's not necessary that it's a supernatural vision like that. Maybe you are able to see the same divinity. Sometimes, you know, when we see Mantra Drishta, did the, did the Rishi see the mantra printing in the air like that? Appearing letter by letter, like a PowerPoint presentation. No. What is Drishta? What is as he seen? Yes, it is, a, it is a way of saying things. It has just occurred to him. That Drishta has occurred to him. 
Sometimes we you know we'll go to teacher, sir. I want to uh, go to home for a holiday. I will see. He says. He doesn't say, okay, I will give or I will not give a holiday for you or leave for you. I will see. Does it mean he really sees? No. It is a way of saying. It occurs to us when we think about something. Something occurs to us. We call it as seeing. So think of Vishwarupa Darshana as something that occurred to Arjuna that all this is Krishna. Every inanimate, animate object surrounding him, even including the enemies, the warriors, the horses, the chariots, the whole thing is just that divinity alone. That may be the experience of Arjuna. Nevertheless, that is one way you can think of. Then Sanjaya continues, Divi Surya Sahastrasya Bhaved Yugapatu Dittha Uthita. This whole thing looked like as if a thousand suns have suddenly risen in the sky together. That bright is that vision, that shiny is that vision. You know, one sun we can't see with our naked eyes. He says, Surya Sahastrasya Bhaved Yugapatu Uthita. As if all thousands of suns have risen at one go in the sky. That is the kind of effulgence that whole vision has. This is how Sanjana, Yadi Bha Sadrisha Sisa. If this happens one together, the thousand suns rise, whatever be the effulgence, that is the effulgence right now I am able to witness. So, this is one shloka that Oppenheimer, you know, you have heard about uh, Robert Oppenheimer was a scientist who was the father of atomic bomb. And the first atomic bomb was uh, tested in New Mexico way back in 1945. At that point of time, he was also a reader of Bhagavad Gita. He was also a student of Bhagavad Gita. So he quoted this shloka when he saw that cloud of you know, gases and that light after the explosion. He, he seems to have said this, that Divi Surya Sahastrasya. It's like thousands of suns have risen at once in the sky. That is the power of this explosion. So imagine what to what, but then that is the kind of power that Krishna was wielding, which Arjuna and Sanjaya realized at this point in time. And what does he say? Tatrai kastham jagat krishnam pravi At that very place, he is containing the entire universe, jagat krishnam, complete universe is in him. And how? Pravi bhaktam anekadha. He has only become many, he has become multifold, manifold. He only has become the sun and the star and the skies and the planets and the galaxies and all the beings. Apashya deva devasya sharire pandavastada. Apashya. He saw that all in the body of Krishna is what he is saying. All galaxies, stars, universes, beings. And how that Krishna only has become multiple. Though he is one, he looks like many at this point in time. Again, was it in one screen or one shape? Maybe it is just an understanding that everything is Krishna. And since he has got this special vision now, so Jnana Drishti, so he is not seeing a physical Krishna. Jnana Drishti is able to perceive that all that exists is Krishna only in his Parabrahma Swarupa. That is Jnana Drishti. Then what about Atindriya Drishti? This is Atindriya Drishti. Beyond the physical eyes, he is able to see certain existences. In this world itself, how is he seeing thousand suns rising together? Maybe he's seeing far off galaxies at that very moment. This universe, in you know, what you call as multiverse. How many universes are there? Billions of galaxies. Maybe he's seeing so many stars at once because his vision has expanded to the whole universe. That's why the effulgence, as if thousand suns are shining together. The sun is a small, they say, sun is maybe a million times bigger than Earth. Ten lakh Earths can fit in the sun. But sun itself is not the biggest star we know in the galaxy. There are much, much bigger stars are there who are even crores of times bigger than sun. So maybe he's seeing all of it together at once. That whole universe is manifestation of Krishna. That is why this effulgence and brightness, all of them as if Krishna only has become many. Katopanishad again says, Eko vashi sarva bhuta antaratma, ekam rupam baudayat karoti. Only one becomes many by his own power. So he feels everything is Krishna. That is the vision that Arjuna is having at this point in time. So what is the reaction? Tatasa vismaya vishto rishta roma dhananjaya has. Sanjaya is telling that our dhananjaya, Arjuna, has become so you know, excited about it. Rishta roma, all his romancha, they call it, you know, sense of adventure and excitement. All his hair is standing on edge. That is the kind of uh, experience. Arjuna is overwhelmed by this sudden sight of uh, the whole thing. And what does he do? Pranamya shirsa devam kritan jalira bhashata. He bows down to that vision that of Krishna and with holding his palms together in Namaskara, Anjali, he speaks thus to Krishna, is what Sanjaya is describing. And what does, he, what does Arjuna say? Arjuna Vacha, Pashyami Devans Tava Deva Dehe. In your body, O oh dear Lord, I see all the gods now. And what, does, what do I? Sarvans Tatha Bhuta Vishesha Sangan. And all kinds of beings, groups of them, I am seeing in your form, I am seeing all of them as a part of you. Brahmana Misham Kamala Sanastaha. I am seeing even Lord Brahma, who is supposed to be the creator of everything, but he himself is a part and parcel of you sitting on a lotus. He also exists in you. And Rishishcha Sarvan Urgaanscha Divyan. I am seeing Rishis, all kinds of Rishis also are in you. 
and lot of serpents are in you, Uruga means serpents are in you. It means what he's seeing all the lokas. Where does Brahma live? Which loka? Satya loka. They say, where do devatas live? Other loka. Maha Janah loka ta. Where do rishis live? Tapa loka. Like that, if you go down, where do snakes live? Patal loka. So the lower beings, you know, snakes mean the lower beings who reside in the darkness or in the lower worlds. All of them I am able to see at once in your being. This is what I am saying, Paralaukik Drishti. He is able to see all the Lokas and the residents of the Lokas at once. From the lowest Patala to Brahma Loka. He is able to see every one of them all embodied in Krishna's personality. This is the vision of Arjuna which he speaks with folded hands. Aneka Bahu Udaram Vaktra Netram Hands are many, mouths are many, stomachs are many, eyes are many. This is how I can see Krishna. Pashyami Tvam Sarvato Anantarupam. I am seeing your infinite form. You are endless. No beginning. Nantam na madhyam na punastavadim. Neither there is a beginning nor middle and end to you. You are expanding. You are so huge. I can't see the beginning and end of you. Nor am I able to perceive where is the middle of it. You are so expansive. Anantam. You are infinite. Pashyami Vishveshwara Vishwarupa. This is the kind of Vishveshwara Lord of the universe. I see your Vishwarupa. I see you in everything. You have hundreds of hands, thousands of Stomachs, eyes, mouths. This is what I tell our people. What is Vishwarupa when we go and serve food to Yadevi Sarvabhute Shushudha Rupena Samstita? When we go and serve that Lord as Annapurna breakfast service, nutrition service, through thousands of stomachs, He eats. When so many students study in our education institutions, through thousands of eyes, and they see thousands of years, they hear the lessons. Through thousands of hands, our devotees, volunteers work day and night for the betterment of people. This is Vishwarupa Darshanam to me. So thousands of mouth people eat, thousands of hands people work, through so thousands of feet we reach out to the unreached geographies, through so thousands of eyes we see people who are in need and we help them, through so thousands of faces we recognize the same divinity which exists in all. This is the true Vishwarupa Darshanam that we should think of. He says this is the, there is no beginning and end to this, right? Because in everyone the same divinity resides. So this is Vishweshwara Vishwarupa. This is the true Vishwarupa of the Lord. But Arjuna is talking like this. And he says, Kiritanam, Gadinam, Chakrinam, Cha, Tejo, Rashim, Sarvato, Dipti, Mantam. I'll go on describing like this for some time. I'm not going to describe the shlokas. I want to get the essence right to you. He says, a lot of Kiritas are there, Gadas are there, and the Chakras are there. Probably he's seeing the armies on both the sides as the very manifestation of Krishna. As if in Kauravas, on Kauravas side also, it's Krishna only fighting. On Pandavas side also, Krishna only fighting. Otherwise, why so many Kiritas? Why so many Gadas? Of course, the artists think there are so many heads Krishna has. But if you go by the Purusha Suktam also, Sastra Shirasha Purushaha, in that also it is very clear. He is not having one neck and a thousand heads on that neck. Though it is shown like that. All heads are his heads. All hands are his hands. All eyes are his eyes. This is the understanding that we must develop from this.